So I'm here to talk about the course proposal for the Teaching in the Cloud course. And as John Tomid did in his presentation, I need to talk a little bit about some background so that there's no confusion about what I'm talking about. So uh, in order to do that, I'm going to start with a screen share of a PowerPoint and give this a shot. So the course I'm proposing is called Think Differently, Inventing Electric Thinking Practices. And I was inspired to do this class by a art article in the Chronicle of Higher Education, which was published back in September. And this was an article about the Under Academy College and kind of clarified for me what the Under Academy College was all about. Uh, back about a year ago, there was a Facebook group that I joined, and <clears throat> um, we were invited to become uh, professors in this kind of college, and it seemed to be a parody or a joke. So I submitted to be a, uh, a kaput magnum, which is uh, here I am pictured with my uh, funny hat in my certificate. This was part of the requirements for becoming a uh, what they call a full digressor in the under academy college. And here uh, there's the list of the degrees and the requirements for the degrees. And so the caput magnum uh, is Latin for big head. It's again kind of meant to be funny. And at the time I didn't realize that they were serious about actually producing classes and creating a, a small kind of alternative college. But it turns out that that's exactly what happened. And like I said, I wasn't sure what they were up to. It looked like a kind of Dadaist parody of, of courses. Um, but when I read the Chronicle article, I got clarification about you know what the possibilities were for this. So um, basically the Under Academy College bills itself as an unaccredited undergraduate, graduate, and postgraduate anti-degree institution and it situates itself as a shadow academic environment offering alternative courses and anti-degree programs in a variety of subjects. The primary mission is to remain open, marginal, and unaccredited. So this is the premise, <clears throat> this is the institution or anti-institution that I will be developing my course within. So I mentioned that the, that the subtitle of the class was um, Inventing Electorate Thinking Practices and the, this concept of electricity is a neologism that was created by Greg Ulmer who was my dissertation director at University of Florida and he invents this term <clears throat> to describe skills necessary for uh, communicating with the new media. So his kind of famous neolo uh, analogy is that electricity is to digital media what literacy is to print media. And so what the term does is draw attention to the need for a new, a new term, a new word that avoids the connection to literacy. And that's because, you know, we've got a number of these literacies that have been proliferating. You've probably heard of them. Digital literacy, media literacy, information literacy, computer literacy, procedural literacy, and, and others I'm not even listing here. And they're all based on this old paradigm of literacy, which is the, the letter uh, regarding alphabetic literacy. So... Uh, the need for native co concept is um, you know, stated here by a different scholar. Just says that it's um, that this term has breadth as a concept and, and draws its being, its ontology from electronic media exclusively. <clears throat> so, Ulmer develops a, an apparatus theory to understand the history of communication and he calls the apparatus a social machine that 
maps the intersection among communications technologies, institutional practices that employ these technologies, and then the subject formation, the conceptions of selfhood that result from these intersections. And he breaks down the, the kind of the major epochs of the, the, the different apparatus, our orality, literacy, and electricity. So here we see the, the kind of extent of each of the timelines, and electricity begins in about 1830. Uh, here's a kind of whimsical timeline that you know, points to various famous moments of invention. Uh, just points to the thing we need to remember is that alphabet literacy was invented at some point, and the institutions that developed uh, again were invented <clears throat> following that. And um, Ulmer says that 1830 was the beginning of electricity because that's the beginning of kind of photographic image making processes. So, and what he calls grammatology is the study of the history and theory of writing. Um, and what he does in his theory is to use the history of literacy as an analogy to our own moment. So, what he does is kind of compare. He compares the transition from orality to literacy to organize our inquiry into the transition from literacy to electricy. So that what he says, literacy shows us by analogy what we are looking for, but it does not give us the answer. So this is where the, the need for invention arises. Um, some of his, he, he thinks with and through analogies, and, and I think some of these will kind of clarify to you what he's up to and uh, what electricity is trying to establish. So what he says here is that uh, what selfhood was to the Greeks, branding is to us. Selfhood being a result of literacy, branding a result of electricity or the new media practices. He also says playing one's avatar is for electricity what writing an essay is to literacy. And uh, finally, electricity does for the affective body what literacy did for the cogitative mind. And this, to me, is one of his greatest insights, is that uh, electricity tries to incorporate the aesthetic, uh, the artistic practices, um, the, the emotional, the, the right brain, quote-unquote. Uh, so it kind of creates a, a whole holistic approach to... Um, to thinking itself. And he has a few more of these analogies. School is to literacy as the internet is to electricy. Performance may be to electricy what definition was to literacy. And then he says a literate person reasons on paper via text. An electric person feels online via felt. The felt is a kind of genre that he creates uh, in one of his books. <clears throat> so thinking th with this process, uh, he, he, he's got a book called Eurotics, and that's uh, Invoking Invention. So using um, analogy as a kind of inventive practice, <clears throat> With the with this analogy, so here um, I'm trying to think: how do we think differently? If concepts are to literacy, what X is to electricity? What what do we put in for X? And this is kind of how he works. So I thought of uh, possibility of decepts playing with the uh, a neologism there. So if literacy makes conceptual thinking possible then electricity makes deceptual thinking possible. This would be a hypothesis. And actually there's some grounds for this. Uh, some of you might recognize this comic, famous comic that goes back, shows a dog at the internet, and he says, on the internet, nobody knows you're a dog, talking to this other dog. So he's uh, basically masking his identity, uh, being deceitful. 
Um, a different scholar, Sherry Turkle, talks about MUDs, which are online uh, games. Says that they blur the boundaries between self and game, self and role, self and simulation. One player says, you are what you pretend to be, you are what you play. So again, a possible example of deceptual thinking made possible by the new media. And then finally, Ulmer himself says that the changing nature of identity in digital civilization is manifested here in the theme of imperson impersonation. And that was uh, one of his examples for how to think with the new media. So uh, the need for inventing new thinking here is invoked by Jeff Rice. He, he says that, that electricity is not against literacy, but is the means to assist our society in adding a new dimension to our language capabilities. This project proposes that our discipline also has the primary responsibility for inventing the practices of reasoning and communicating in ways native to new media. So this is supplying some of the justification for why I want to do this class. Um, here's a different analogical heuretics, a different example of this um, of my own making. If, if we compare definition to literacy, what if we create something called infinition as resulting from electricity so that if definition is the act of making clear then infinition is the act of making unclear and as an example of how this might work uh, here's a uh, image from it's called a coke snowflake uh, kind of representing fractal geometry and how um, taking something with strict boundaries and um, dimensionality uh, and showing how it can become something of infinite boundary so that the the boundaries the boundary actually becomes fuzzy and, and half dimensional if you uh, know anything about fractals so that again thinking if, if definition is the creation of clear boundaries then infinition, infinition would be the creation of unclear or fuzzy boundaries that kind of you can see here on the Coke snowflake. So uh, a couple slides here about how we always invoke uh, these moments of transition. We always invoke fear, and, and the most famous one comes from Plato. Uh, and I'm not going to read this whole thing, but the the idea here that Plato expresses in the Phaedrus is that there's a fear that uh, with this literacy thing, uh, people aren't going to use their memories anymore. Um, they're going to trust to this external written character, and they won't be remembering anything. And um, he found this to be potentially highly problematic. So it's kind of comical now to look back and and see literacy as problematic, but it, it did undermine oral cultural values and practices. And that's kind of what's happening now, and, and that's what we see in some of the, the current responses. Uh, for example, here, Marianne Wolf, who's a cognitive neuroscientist, um, she expresses concern about the plight of the reading brain as it encounters the technologically rich society. The reading brain is slowly becoming endangered. The unforeseen consequences um, of this transition is affecting every aspect of our lives. And usually these kinds of statements are pretty alarmist. Um, also, Sven Burkert's in the Gutenberg Elegies kind of expresses the same kind of uh, fearful response. Um, he says this transition from print to electronic media, there's this rippling effect, this reweaving the entire social and cultural web. Uh, the tendencies are already at work. Um, we see the decline in our educational systems. Uh, students are less and less able to read. And again, very alarmist. Um, uh, but what we see is that different competencies are emerging and uh, they will be at uh, put to use in different uh, 
institutional environments. So that's part of what this class is to kind of try to invent some of those new practices, those new ways of thinking. And so what electricity is ultimately it then is a invitation to inventing these new practices, these new ways of thinking. So <clears throat> here's a, a final quote from Ulmer who says that the difficulty of studying studying our own moment is that we are immersed in it and everything is in flux. Uh, things are changing radically and quickly. So um, I end with some references. I'll also post this uh, up to the page so that you can check that out if you like. So once again, the course is going to be called Think Differently, Inventing Electric Thinking Practices. So uh, coming off of the screen share, I will now talk a little bit about the course proposal itself. And I'm going to just call up the document itself. Um, I think that's probably the easiest way is just to run through the form. So I'm going to share that. <clears throat> and um, hopefully it won't be too boring if I do it this way. <clears throat> so uh, the course name, Thinking Differently, Inventing Electric Thinking Practices. There I am, the uh, UAC full digressor. Uh, I should put CM for put Magnum there. Uh, that's my degree in, in their uh, institution. <clears throat> and, you know, the, the course is intended for the Under Academy College. Uh, the type of course is, it's not formal, it's not continuing education, so I'm, I'm just calling it other. I'm assuming a class of, of, of an eight-week long course uh, with one meeting a week with some readings and some blog posts, so I'm figuring two to three hours a week. And whenever their next cycle is, or maybe the cycle after that is when I would be ready to offer this, so probably late spring or early summer 2013. So uh, catalog description is that it's an um, invitation to collaborate in inventing the thinking practices for an electorate age. And here's the course description. Start to the quote from uh, kind of major French philosopher Gilles Deleuze. He says, a new image of thought, a new conception of what thinking means is the task of philosophy today. This course invites participants to explore and invent the new conception of thinking that the age of electricity will herald as the latest technologies of communication are leveraged to unleash the latent creative potential of human becoming. This under academy college course will be to electric thinking what the traditional university course is to literate thinking. As such, students will participate in establishing the institutional practices of a new era, one founded on aesthetics, pleasure, and collaborative cognition. Students will not understand electric thinking, they will undergo electric thinking. And that's meant to appeal to uh, those people who might be taking this class. Uh, key learning objectives are that students will define electricity and distinguish it from morality and literacy. Students will collaborate to invent new thinking practices appropriate to the age of electricity. Students will undergo a different kind of educational experience. And that will be where the kind of innovation comes in or that I attempt to create. <clears throat> um, I will be the course leader. Talon Mehmet, who is the kind of leader and founder of Under Academy College, and the faculty there, spelled with a K intentionally, is uh, hopefully will support the development and delivery. So looking at a, a semester models, quote unquote, um, it'll have a start and end date, um, but they do, um, they cluster their courses in cycles. So the timeline will depend on their scheduling, and that may not correspond to a typical university schedule. In fact, I'm relying on that because I will not be ready for January, uh, kind of true spring semester. 
So um, calling this a course in the cloud with live faculty support because what I envision is kind of <clears throat> doing short orienting videos as introductions to each week accompanied with some kind of reading or media encounter that, that will be online. Uh, I will ask students to do um, blog posts and then uh, comment on two or three other student posts. Um, so they'll po post by midweek, they'll uh, comment on others by the end of the week, and then uh, end the week with group discussions via Google Hang Hangouts. And if the class is small enough, then the whole class can meet that way. So looking at using basically everything that's available, Google Sites, video, video conferencing, the forums, wikis, blogs, and possibly Second Life if, uh, if students are able to do that. Um, distribution goals, calling it a massive open online course, although I comment underneath that it's more like a, kind of a minimal open online course because the, the college has a cap enrollment at 15. Uh, and because it, part of the article in the Chronicle described them trying to do a better job of delivering liberal arts curriculum, so they want to keep the class small. Um, they f they think that m the true MOOCs uh, with tens of thousands of people are kind of dehumanizing the humanities, so that um, their goal is to kind of undermine that and create a different model. So that's where uh, there's might be some value to what I'm doing is to demonstrate how an online course uh, can serve a liberal arts humanities curriculum. So uh, the recognition is like certificate of completion or some kind of degree program that the under academy college invents. A pricing model, I, I say other because this is basically a volunteer effort on my part, um, done in my spare time. I'm not looking to get paid. I'm basically looking to um, upgrade my skills learn some new technologies and, and practice in doing some of this to position myself possibly for a future course delivery in this mode and where I could could demand some some uh, some pay possibly which wouldn't be bad um, cooperative learning attributes there will be like I said um, there'll be email well probably um, forums Google forums, uh, blogging, uh, wiki p wiki development. Uh, I will be available through Google Hangouts for live video based interaction um, and then try to get the groups to do some Google Hangouts as well. And like I said, possibility of Second Life virtual world meetings uh, because that would be a different avenue to explore for ways of thinking with the new medium. <clears throat> So feasibility is it doable? Um, looking at plan launch summer 2013, depending on their schedule. Uh, learning hours 16 to 24 hours, as I said. Um, looking at probably one hour per learning hour that I would have to put in. This assumes that I will have kind of fleshed it out and have a general idea of what's going to happen each of those weeks, and I have been working on that. And I assume that as we go through the coming weeks in this course that we will develop some of that as well. Uh, there will be some pre-created content, uh, some scholarly essays, that, something I've written, that other people have written, it's available online, um, some scanned book chapters, and this kind of thing. And uh, no real investment, only time for developing uh, some skills. Uh, for example, it took me about three hours of testing and fiddling with Google Hangouts to figure out how to do this and I'm hoping that it works because I'm spending a lot of time putting this video together. Um, so overall feasibility, it's, it's high feasibility that I'll be able to do this. Um, most of these courses are pretty short, they're four weeks or so. They're not too demanding in terms of asking students to produce a lot or 
you know, having uh, professors invest too much time. So uh, the challenge for me will be to kind of keep it simple. And basically the idea is to invite other people into this brainstorming process, which I've been doing for a while. And that was uh, another kind of revelation I had when I read that article in the Chronicle was that, hey, they're, they're trying to provide a different model for what courses can be like. And that made me think, yeah, okay, let's, let's give this a shot. Um, if you look at some of their courses uh, at their website, a lot of them are, you know, seem very frivolous. They're, they're obvious parodies. Um, I'm hoping that my course will provide some depth to what they're offering, you know, kind of a, a more serious course dealing with specific theory and trying to do something differently. So, um, you know, one person was quoted in the article saying that this is satirical education that takes itself very th seriously and does want to provoke critical discussion and engender a creative learning environment. So that is one of my goals too. Um, as for innovativeness, uh, I have trouble judging my own innovativeness. Um, you know, am I creating new content? Yeah, I'm going to do some videos and some PowerPoint slides. Um, existing content, uh, am I using it in a new way? Um, only insofar as I'm trying to make this class uh, an exercise in collaborative cognition where we're thinking together and inventing new thinking practices and exploring what those might be, uh, that would be where this is kind of innovative, I'd say. Um, technolo technology innovation, I'm not sure I would say that this is necessarily innovative because um, everything here has been used before, Second Life, the you know, virtual worlds, which is probably the, the most far out technology has been used in education for years now. So, um, but the um, do I see these uh, lowering barriers? You know, not necessarily because if I'm asking people to get on a second life, they've got to have a a certain uh, level of of hardware to be able to do that, and you know, speed of connection, and so that's kind of a high barrier. My target audience is really people who are in the college, it's the, the teachers of the college and, and other students who have taken classes there before. Seems to be mostly academics, artists, possibly graduate students, um, th other theorists who, uh, and then I, I might attract people who are interested in uh, Ulmer's work from their uh, email discussion list. So, so uh, you know, participation is going to depend on uh, outreach of the college and, and my own outreach as well. Uh, as for teaching innovation, you know, the goal for me is to make this an experiential course that engages an electric notion of identity. Uh, and so that's that sounds very fancy, uh, but, you know, it, I think it's just doing something that's already been done. So that's where I, I find it hard to see it as innovative. But um, certainly trying to do something different, that's for sure. Um, and uh, will this lower barriers to learning for students? Uh, you know, I think making this a fun, enjoyable class, which I think all the UAC courses are meant to be, that should lower the barrier a bit. I will have fairly complicated reading and theory behind it. So, but of course, my role would be to kind of deliver that and make it uh, something that people are able to take in and understand if if they don't know it ahead of time. But you know, for me, I'm I'm assuming that I'll have an audience that's already somewhat familiar with the theory and um, you know are willing to kind of explore and experiment with that. So uh, I gave myself a innovative uh, rating of four, but I thought that might be high. Um, <clears throat> I think uh, the innovation is more in the content and the and the attitude toward the educational experience 
that is inviting collaborative invention of new electric practices. So, so that I think will be different. I will not have answers, uh, but I will be kind of trying to facilitate the inventive practice. So uh, impact discussion, uh, basically like I said, there's going to be a max of 15 students. If I taught this twice a year, that would be 30 students a year, assuming that all of this carries on for that long. I might hit um, between 75 and 150 students uh, over the five years. Um, as for uh, who would actually adopt this, um, I have no idea if anybody would be interested in picking this up. Um, you know, possibly if the UAC becomes a, a model for liberal arts, humanities, online education, then uh, this could. Uh, maybe you know I'll get on someone's radar as someone who could do that, and then I could deliver you know kind of more serious courses. But for now, I uh, basically just want to learn all of this uh, Google free Google technologies to see if I could uh, pull this off. <clears throat> um, I think this could make a difference to those who do take it with the goal of exploring new ways of thinking and you know could kind of maybe clarify what for them has been more intuitive or uh, something that they haven't really thought about and you know, give people a different way of using the new media and new ways of teaching with that media so I'm assuming that you know most most of the students taking this class are probably going to be other university level instructors or graduate students and maybe artists who might be or become teachers at some point so this could be a model for them of how to use technology in a cloud environment for collaborative brainstorming collaborative cognition and problem solving and that's all I have for that so I will end my screen share and uh, I'm not sure uh, if that was on or not so but anyway I think I've talked long enough and I'm really hoping this recorded this time because I had eight or nine attempts to uh, make this work and uh, you know finally got it to work at, at the end so I'm um, looking forward to uh, carrying on with this process and I uh, want to thank Judah for letting me be involved um, and I'm sorry for not being around for uh, kind of dropping in and out uh, just been very busy uh, been sick and this and that so but uh, after uh, course four you're supposed to sign this commitment paper and I thought okay now I gotta get serious so but I'm, I'm happy to have had a chance to catch up and, and get this process done so uh, thank you very much for listening, and I look forward to hearing any comments that you have or questions uh, and discussion. And um, thanks for helping me out. Talk to you soon.